Seven has historically been a lucky number and Apple is most likely hoping that it's a lucky one for them. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com and yesterday at WWDC in San Francisco, Apple announced iOS 7. I've got it running on our test iPhone 5. Let's take a look at the changes and see if this can compete with Android, Windows Phone, Blackberry and all of the other alternatives on the market. Announced yesterday at WWDC 2013 in San Francisco, iOS 7 is a complete overhaul of the previous version of Apple's popular mobile OS. Now, it's not going to be available until the fall, and probably it'll be paired with some new hardware. That said, if you're a developer, you can get your hands on it right now, and we did just that over here at PhoneDog and put it on our test iPhone 5 unit right here. So you're seeing iOS 7 in the flesh. It's the beta version of the software and you can see that out of the box here, just some immediate design changes from iOS 6. Completely different design here, completely different look and feel. And yes, it retains some of the similar notification areas, but it brings some new features in as well. Now, there are a wealth of features to iOS 7, so I'm only going to highlight a couple of the most important ones in this video so we can do a quick hands-on and you can really get the meat of what's most important in iOS 7. That said, one of the biggest ones is Control Center. And you just saw me swipe it up from the bottom of the display here did not mean to go into that let's swipe up here just like that and you've got quick access to your most important toggles here so airplane mode Wi-Fi Bluetooth do not disturb and then of course screen orientation lock you got quick access to your brightness settings quick access to your music as well and then airdrop and iPhone which we'll talk about airdrop here in just a second also quick access to a flashlight so if you're traveling maybe you need a flashlight on the fly you got that right here and a couple of different ones down here as well, your alarm, and then easy access to a couple of other things, calculator and of course camera as well. So a lot of different features there in the control center, really nice and you can access that if you so choose from the lock screen. You can actually disable this if you don't want to access it from the lock screen, but you can do that as well. Now speaking of, you saw another one also, the notification center has been completely overhauled and from here you get three different tabs, you get today, all and missed. You see the date, you see the weather here, kind of, the high is going to be 95 on the 11th. I have two meetings at 1 o'clock p.m. I've got quick access to my stocks which I can customize in the stocks application and it will reflect over here. Tomorrow I do have events scheduled. I'm not sure why they're not showing up. Maybe I don't have that calendar synced. In fact, I'm pretty sure I don't have that calendar synced to this device. But then of course, you've got all and missed as well. So this will show your text messages. This will show some emails also. So I've got all, I've got today, and I can just swipe right back out and get rid of that. Now you swipe to the side now to access the home screen. And you've got your typical home screen panels here, but a couple of differences including swipe down anywhere on the screen to access search iPhone. So I can search from stuff there and I can swipe over when I'm ready and do that from this panel also, custom backgrounds as well. And this is kind of hard to show off on camera, but the background moves now. It's kind of a gyroscopic background where you move and you can see what's most important to you. So for example, this is a picture of the beach that I proposed on. So you can see I can move background and say, oh, there's the rock we sat on and move it around and kind of see different aspects of the rock as I move around and the icons move as well. So that's a cool little feature there on iOS 7, but again, just a complete design overhaul, and you see this in messaging and more. So we'll go into messages, for example, and you can see right here, I don't actually have this iPhone activated, but you can see messages, you can see edit, and really the text is different, kind of reminiscent here of a combination between WebOS and Windows Phone 8, but I just sent this as a test, Office voicemail, hello, how are you, or just how are you actually. So you can see that there, the keyboard has been overhauled as well and looks different. And of course, portrait to landscape, just showing you what it looks like. The text gets a little bit larger when you move through that, but you get your messages and I can access the contact directly right there and my keyboard and my camera, of course, as need be. So the overall functionality is still pretty similar, but the colors and the text bubbles have been changed, the colors in the background, and of course the keyboard font, all this stuff has been changed, and you see that throughout the entire device. Settings as well, for example, you can see how it looks over here on iOS 7. Similar setting options, so you see general sounds, all the stuff that you've seen in past versions of iOS. That said, the toggles look different, where I can toggle on and off airplane mode there, for example, those look a little bit different. Notification center, I have access to what appears in the notification, so calendar day view, reminder stocks. I can turn all that stuff on and off if I want to and then I can make that my own. So you got that, you got multitasking on this device and of course this has changed as well. So all applications have background multitasking options now. So I can press and hold that twice or double tap I should say and swipe right through. Very similar to the cards in WebOS. So for example here I can swipe out a camera just by swiping up and boom camera is gone. My emails as well. I've got my clock right there, I can swipe up and that's gone also. So again, very, very similar to WebOS and of course the card setup and WebOS has been long gone, but brought that over 
into iOS 7. Now, the applications themselves, the icons have been changed. You see Passbook, Game Center, Photos, they're all different now. And then you've got music as well with iTunes Radio integrated out of the gate. So network's not available, I'm not, I'm not on Wi-Fi right now or on cellular data, but you can see iTunes Radio down here in the bottom, and I've got my playlist, my artist. So similar setup here as previous versions, just from a music perspective, but then when I go into radio, I've got the new option right there to access that. So that is a nice feature. Now, AirDrop, I promised you we'd talk about that. AirDrop is very similar to S-Beam on the Galaxy Series devices or NFC on the other Android devices. You can AirDrop to other people, so I can turn on AirDrop, for example, and make it either contacts only or everyone, so I'll turn it on and I've got AirDrop on. So when I'm ready to share something, let's say a photo, for example, I've got the beach picture here. I can go down here and then I can click AirDrop. I can send it via message, mail, Twitter, Facebook. And then it gives me a couple of options here as well. Copy, slideshow, AirPlay, assign to contact, uses wallpaper, print. I can do a bunch of different options here. But let's just AirDrop it. So I should ask them, they do not appear automatically. So ask them to open Control Center and turn on AirDrop. When I turn on, I should go ahead and share this one too. And I can add Flickr, of course, or print those out and more. But when they have AirDrop enabled, they'll show up right there and I can share those pictures. So you don't have to bump the devices back to back or anything like that. And Tim Cook actually made a big joke out of that at WWDC yesterday, or one of the executives did on stage. But still, pretty cool that you can do that feature in iOS 7. Now, Safari's been changed as well, just giving you a quick look here at the applications. A couple things, tabs here, I can open up new tabs and just show you what it looks like as you swipe through those. Of course, those are right here. And you can see the animations have been changed. I can click done when I'm done, obviously. I can go to my bookmarks from there. So obviously a much more simplified version of the OS, but with it, if that makes sense, comes some more robust applications, some more robust options within iOS. So it's a little bit of a misnomer because it is a little bit more simplistic on first glance. That said, it brings some really nice features. Love Control Center, love AirDrop, love iTunes Radio, and then of course, new Siri enhancements as well, which Siri's not gonna turn on here, but you can see. I know, connect to the internet, I know, I know. But you can see right here, again, Siri's background looks a little bit different and there's a little voice inflection thing that pops up at the bottom when you talk to Siri. Overall, really impressive. I'll take a look at camera as well so you can see the differences here. And I've got built-in filters. So for example, I've got photo, square, I can swipe between these, panoramic pictures, boom. And actually, I did not mean to bring that up. Let's go ahead and swipe that back down, photo, video, and keep in mind this is a beta version of iOS 7 as well, so there may be some quirks in the software. But photo, video, so we'll go to photo for example, and I'm gonna swipe over here and click right here, and you can see previews of all of the different filters. So transfer, instant, I actually happen to like instant quite a bit, so I'll bring over, you know, a pair of sunglasses for example, and I can take a picture of those sunglasses with that filter, and boom, they pop up right there in the gallery right there and you can see look and fly as they say with that instant filter so very cool features there iOS 7 complete overhaul and there's a ton to cover on this device we'll start putting this in dog fights and more so even though iOS 7 isn't out until the fall it is a contender to beat Android to beat Windows Phone 8 I'm excited about this coming out it brings you know it's always good to have competition in the marketplace be it against Android or Windows Phone 8 or Blackberry Regardless of what you think about Apple or their design strategy or their overall business strategy, it's great to have competition in the marketplace. You've got maps and obviously you can see all the different applications here look totally different, really impressed with the overall performance and here is your phone and we'll sign out with that so you can see what it looks like. So again, very minimalistic. What is cool, at least I find pretty cool, is when I click three, the background shows up behind it. So again, as you see right there, my background showing up underneath those numbers, pretty cool feature nonetheless. Keep it locked in phonedog.com for continuing coverage. If you have questions about iOS 7, hit me up on Twitter and I'll do my best to answer those. I'm on there at phonedog underscore Aaron. Facebook, facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker and on Google Plus at gplus.to slash phonedog. Much more to come, so keep it locked in the site for continuing coverage. And as always, I'll see you next time.